storytelling, that's their lives, that's their story. It's important for everybody to tell their story. It doesn't matter if you're old or young or middle-aged, everybody should have the right to be able to tell their story and to be proud of it. I'm John Clausen from Aberdeen, Saskatchewan. I grew up on the farm and I, and I enjoyed the farm. Working hard on the farm keeps you out of trouble. You don't have time to run around, fool around, to keep busy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I liked working on the farm. I liked working with my brother. We were, uh, we were smelling to, to, to barn and we would stay in the barn instead of coming to the house because mm. we'd stink the house up. <laughs> I'm Josephine Dastrovic, but in the, in the hall where I just came out of, they call me Jojo. I pretty well call myself to anything, but they're stuck on Jojo. It's easier for them to remember, I think. And I don't talk very clear about my teeth. <laughs> He looks so much like my grandson, the hair especially. You know what he did? He went and he dyed it blonde. And I tell you, everybody was after him to do this part and this part. And he's not afraid to smile. My name is Irene Vaughan. I like gardening. Yeah, when I was young. Oh yeah? <laughs> I've been there for ages though. So. I'm far from being young. <laughs> and I love my kids more than anything. I worked with Maria for five sessions. The work involves just allowing her to tell her story and uh, going through the process of getting to know her and her feeling comfortable in a space where she's able to speak with me and look at imagery and that often provokes a story. My name is Maria. I was born in Finland. I came to Canada in 1965. This is one of her happiest memories. It involved a scene from Venice, which was one of her favorite places, and she had been there a number of times. It reminds her of a time before she came to the care home where she was in a good space and she had visited her family and she had a nice relationship with her sister. And so that trip was one of the last times that they spent a really good time together. When we were working with Frida at the 
Al Ritchie Health Action Center. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the program, she said, you know, thank you so much for this. It made me realize I'm still here. Right. And that, that, to me, is one of the magical things about this program is that some of these people feel fairly invisible at this point in their lives, you know, especially the ones that are in, in kind of situations of isolation or feeling really cut off from what their life has been about up until that point, family and home and everything. And now they're living in permanent care. And I think in some cases they start to feel like they no longer have agency. Um, they don't have any kind of um, control over what happens to them and, and that they're kind of forgotten. It started because somehow we got onto the topic of comparing experiences of our parents in their final days and the, the, the terrible boredom that they had and the lack of meaningful stimulation and acknowledgement in their lives and, and the excitement that we saw over and over and over and over again with, the, with the, the, the participants in the program doing something that was meaningful about their life and that stimulated them mentally and emotionally and, and all of that. I'm Brenda Amiskasi, and I'm originally from Muskogon First Nation. And that's near Lestock. And uh, I came from Lestock to Regina, and I was overwhelmed with the big facility, and especially the noise. But I've gotten used to it because now there's fun activities. My maiden name is Brenda Windigo. I wish to return to that name instead of a miscuse. It was it was fun to recall all of that. Some of it was Fun. Some of it was painful, but it it helped heal. I'm Ron Sutton. I like airplanes. I like flying. I got interested in model building when I was little. And it carried on. It's kind of like the plane you built when you were young. You served in the... The Canadian Air Force. Out of Moose Jaw, hey? Yep. So it was cool. All his knowledge from building his own airplane came out, out into use when we made this little model. Well, that model came out pretty good, didn't it? Sure did, bud. So Dad was, what, 91? He was born in Wales. Uh, Mom and him immigrated in 1957 when I was just a small baby and Lennon was 13 months. Um, he probably was 17, 18 when he joined the army and he didn't talk a lot about it. Um, the only story we knew, really I knew, is that he 
had, he was part of um, what they call the desert rats and they went in to clean up all the mines that were left in the, the deserts after, kind of at the tail end of the war. But with the project, he shared more stories that we'd never heard. To us before it was yeah. more about well adventure, it was we wanted to see the world, but in the stories he, he, he shared with us here, it was more about losing his, his friends and, and the death that occurred in it, which he had never shared anything like that before. Do what you can do today. Don't leave it off till tomorrow because you never know what's going to happen for tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes because it'll always say it'll be tomorrow. You keep putting it off, one day you're going to get to a stage in life where you're old, too old to do anything that you wanted to do when you were younger. That was because you kept saying tomorrow, live in today and do it now.